says that spirit uh, was never born, therefore spirit never dies. Um, why am I saying that? I'm saying that because uh, many times when we we uh, come and we meet people, you ever meet somebody and you naturally gravitate to them yeah. and you don't yeah. know them yeah. and you're trying to figure out why you are so, uh, your spirit is so fully on dealing with them. It's like y'all been knowing each other for a long time. Um, and then you got other people where you're like, well, I, my spirit ain't lining up with what they spirit. I'm picking up on something different over here yes, and I yes. want to be a part of that. Yes. Um, a lot of times with the growth, uh, it's kind of like dating and relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we young and we're dating. Most most young people, uh, when we're young, we're dating. We're in relationships, out of relationships, different people, different faces. Yeah. But there is a same spirit that we are attracted to. And you pick up on it, whether you know it's good for you or it ain't. Yeah. And you're like, this is, this is a different person. But I recognize that spirit. Yeah. I recognize those actions. I recognize uh, those responses. I recognize how they carry themselves. I know this ain't good for me. Or this could be good for me, but I don't want it. Amen, amen, amen. And... Hmm. With that, we have to get to a point where when we recognize the spirits um, that sometimes we need self-deliverance. Amen. Yes. Yes. Because we keep going back to the bad spirit that we know ain't good for us. What feeds our flesh, what uh, satisfies us naturally, what makes us happy for the moment versus going with the good the good the good spirits the good yeah. feelings the good things the things that are there to last eternally mm -hmm. things that won't come and corrupt us things that won't come and change us things that won't come and tear us down right. things that won't come and cause us to literally go crazy yeah and yeah. be in seeing a therapist or in a psych ward because we don't lost our mind yeah. trying to deal with this spirit when all this time we already knew it wasn't good for us, so now the spirit of the yeah. yeah. now it wasn't good for us. Um, when we are recognizing spirits, it's very important. Um, I don't know how many of y'all have been to church service. How many of y'all believe in demons? We believe in demons? We, okay. Uh, we believe in demons. We believe, believe in angels. Uh, we believe in positive spirits, negative spirits. I don't know how many of y'all have been in a church service where you've actually seen a real demon in a person. I've been in several of them. And one thing they all have in common, they come to church like us, normal. They dress like us. Yes. They shout like us. They praise like us. They will even worship like us. Amen. But then at some point in a service or in in, at a point in time, something pulls their cloth off, their covering. And a lot of times, the people that carry that are host for these spirits, they don't really know that they are host for the spirit. Yeah. A lot of people don't believe, they believe partial of the Bible, or they believe there's a heaven but no hell, or uh, you got spirit of belief, heaven and hell. These things are real, and when you really experience them, you understand that they are real. But people will still act confused when they see these things. Yeah. So when you when these spirits come out, one thing they have in common is they move a certain way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You see, you see people that are being that are dealing with spirits, demons rather, and their body movement is way off. Something that the normal person could not do. You got people twisting their arms, they're walking funny, they're dragging their feet. I, I hope I painted the picture fair because I need y'all to see this. They're dragging their feet, 
almost as if their leg is half broken and they still walk and they don't feel no pain. Yeah. Their arms is twisting and bending backwards behind their neck, behind their head, behind their back. Then you got people that can never lift their arms, now able to lift their arms. They can do a full 360 with their fingers locked. You got seniors that are in wheelchairs, that ain't walked in a long time. Yeah. And we pray miracles for them to get up and be healed and delivered and set free and be able to walk. Yeah. But sometimes they have spirits and when they get up and walk out their wheelchair, it ain't them. Yes. It's that demon yeah. because the demon has power as well. Right. Demons That's can right. get us to do things that we didn't know we could do. Right. Demons will make us do things we didn't know we was capable of doing. Hallelujah. And the longer they sit in our body and it just festers, they're building and building. It's like they just grow powerful and more powerful because guess what? When you go look in that mirror, you don't see a demon. Amen. You see yourself. Ah. So when you see yourself in that mirror and, you, and that demon is also looking in the mirror, that demon don't even see him. He see you. That's right. She see you. So now you got two spirits in one body Amen. fighting each other. Amen. Good yeah. and the bad. Yeah. Yeah. Both of them are only recognizing one individual. However, there is two. We're sitting here fighting these spirits, and you got some pastors or some leaders that are trained how to deal with these spirits because you have to be very careful when you are dealing with these spirits simply because when you come in contact with them, spirits jump. So, when we are dealing with a spirit and we're trying to cast them out and set the person free, they're speaking back in their language that we don't understand. They're acting weird. They're talking crazy. Uh, they're crying or yelling, however you want to express their communication. They're doing things that are abnormal. Mm -hmm. At the same time, while they're doing that, they know we're getting ready to cast you have one host. <laughs> so they are now scouting the room for another host. Right. And if you're not prepared and you're not uh and you're not prayed up yes. and covering your own spirit, guess what? You walk in the service and you just caught a second beam. Yes. And you going home trying to figure out why you're doing things weird at your yes. house now. Yes. Why you building altars at your house that you never even imagined building. Why you're talking to people crazy that you ain't never talked to, you're saying words you ain't never said, you're thinking thoughts that you've never thought, you're contemplating things you've never contemplated, yeah. you're steady going through phases of life that you have never went through, and it's driving you crazy. Amen. You don't know what's going on. And then the worst thing about it is when we get to these situations like this, uh, we don't seek help because the church don't really tell us that even though. We go to church and we have a Savior who is the ultimate, the supreme. He can do all things, anything we ask and above and beyond. Mm -hmm. The church don't tell us that we still can go seek therapy and get some extra assistance. Yeah. Even if it's just to have somebody listen to us to know where we're at mentally. Yes, a lot of times, the church veer away from therapy and a psychiatrist, but little do we understand is that those people, they're also believers. And when we go see some of them, sometimes they will, not only will they give us the natural training that they've been trained on how to uh, help those that need therapy, but they also know how to do it in the spirit realm. See, God works in such a mysterious way that He affects His, his people, His workers, in several different departments of the world. Yes. He places, we've got saved folks in jails, we've got saved folks in the clubs, we've got saved folks uh, at the sex stores, we've got saved folks uh, at, at the satanic rallies, we've got saved folks, pardon me, God, he places people in certain departments to minister to a certain people yes. because yes. some of us have been in church so long we just don't reach a vast majority of the world yes. and we don't try to Amen. we want to deal with just those that are already 
was born in church, was raised in church, because we recognize the spirit. But the problem with that is, now the church has become so clickish that we no longer have to know how to pull new beings and new spirits. We no longer know how to attract uh, those that don't know Christ. We no longer know how to uh, gain an angel. All we know how to do is recycle one another. Yeah. So when things don't go right here, we move to the next ministry. I left that church and went to this church. They wanted me to do this. I don't want to do that. I want to do this. So I went over here because over here they'll let me do this. Amen. <laughs> we recycle one another. We recognize a spirit. And because our spirit recognizes spirit, church folk make no church folk. We know church folk. Amen. We know we know we say sanctify the new. We also know we cut up. Yeah. 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 We, know, yeah. we know we act the food. Yes. And we and we and we like knowing each other. The problem with the church today is that the church fear going to unknown places. And we are supposed to preach the gospel in unknown places. How can we pull the masses when we're only dealing with one spirit? Yeah. We're only going to that, that same spirit that we recognize. How can we pull those in? So like the clubs. Sex stores. The, the liquor stores, yeah. the bars. Yeah. Uh, everywhere we say the saints should not be. Out late at night. I don't even know if churches still do street ministry these days. It seems as if most evangelism that is done for most churches is over the seas, but with those that are already wanting Christ and know about Christ, but they need a little boost. Amen. But the church is no longer going to those that don't know him or those that do know him but have left for whatever reason, church or whatever they want to call it, and pull them back in. Mm -hmm. See, um, when recognizing spirits, we need to show love and compassion. Hallelujah. Um, Hallelujah. No matter what it is. As long as we stay strong within our faith, strong with our God, strong with who we know him to be, uh, trusting him and allowing him to lead us, there's no way we can come in contact with the Spirit and it get us and we not get Him. Amen. Because we serve a big guy. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> couple, uh, not a couple, a long time ago. It was like 2008, 2009. I was still in school. First church I ever played at uh, back home. And I was really active in the ministry. Uh, joined the street ministry. And we were literally, it was like one of my favorite ministries because we would literally meet up about three, four times a week, about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. We'd rally up, <laughs> a whole group of us, and we would say, hey, we got to go hit this area. Y'all going to go here, we're going to go here, we're going to meet up here, then we're going to go here, we're going to go there. I loved it. I get to be out the house late at night. I'm still in school. I'm, you know, I ain't in trouble at night. I can see what's going on at night in the streets. <laughs> and, you know, back then, it was... When the street lights come on, you better be home. So I never knew what was going on at night. So I had fun in the street ministry. We go meet people, ask them if we can pray, all kinds of stuff. Then I came across this one individual who was a Buddhist. And uh, I was ready to pray and all that. One of the, uh, he was an assistant minister uh, on a team. He told me no. I said, well, why not? This street ministry, you know, we out here to evangelize and go save souls and you know minister right, to the gospel right, right. he Buddhist why, why don't we go give him a shot yeah. because of his religion the uh, assistant minister was afraid of his spirit because then I didn't know but after some time I gave thought I said he's not strong in his relationship with his spirit with God because if he was there's no way any other spirit or or uh, belief should detour you away from wanting right. to make your lives who your God is. Yes. There's no way. Now I'm not saying we're trying to convert people. If you believe, if you if you're a Satanist, yes. be a Satanist. That's right. If you believe in Buddha, believe in Buddha. If you believe only in God and not Jesus, believe in what you believe in. Amen. I'm not here to convince you who my God is. Yes. But our our spirit and light should shine so bright uh, 
um, and uh, being the image of Him, that even those that believe different, when they see it, that should make them naturally gravitate to us. Like you got, you, you got a bright spirit. You got a bright light about you. Amen. What do you believe? When they start asking questions, you know they're curious. Yes. Yeah. Once they start getting curious, you know you can pull them in little by little. You're not going, oh, you're going to hell. You don't believe this. Da, da, da. Uh, 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 someone a long time ago told me, you got to catch a fish before you skin it. Amen. Uh, Amen. And for a long time, we've been trying to skin a fish that we ain't caught. <laughs> we see them, get them on that hook. And then we just go straight to straight to skinning yeah. the scales before we can start willing them in. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's the problem. Amen. The fish don't recognize that type of spirit. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't approach spirits any type of way. Amen. There is an art with dealing with people. There's an art with dealing with spirits. There's an art to... Uh, getting one to convert over to whatever it may be. It's just like training ground. Like I was talking about last week about the training ground. It's a training ground. Mm -hmm. You have to know, you got to know your lane. You got to know your department. You got to know how to operate. And you can't operate the same way with everybody, with every spirit coming out. Mm -hmm. Because every spirit is different. Mm -hmm. So you got to assess the situation. You got to assess the person, assess their responses. You got to go through a whole lot of assessments. A lot of people ain't got time for that. That's like jobs these days. They want workers, but they don't want to train these days no more. Y'all yeah. want somebody already that's already been working in the field yeah. trained, but then y'all don't want to pay them for for their ability, yeah. for their years of, of expertise. Yeah. So how y'all gonna look for people and not want to train them, and then the ones that are trained, they don't want to pay them. Yeah. <laughs> Makes no sense, right? Amen, amen. So it's the same with dealing, dealing with spirits. You got to train. That's why you got to study uh, the word for yourself. You got to show yourself through. Yeah. Many preachers can get up here and preach from this podium and tell you their interpretation. Their interpretation is not always correct. Amen. I've amen, seen it at seven last amen. word services. Y'all been to service where the, the church done brought about seven to ten preachers. And usually I give them a different scripture, but I've been to some where they give them all the same scripture. And they ask for them to interpret it. And I guarantee you, half of them go against the grain. Amen. One will get up there and say one thing, another will come up right behind them and say, the total opposite, you're like, we're not confused because we got two different views on it. You got a positive view, you got a negative view. Right. So what do I follow? Right. You got to show, you got to, you got to study to show thyself approved. And dealing with your spirit, same thing. You have to study the spirit, you got to know the spirit, you got to know it by its fruits, mm. you got to know it uh, by its ways. You got to really study uh, when dealing with these spirits um, that you come in contact with. Um, and that is something you can apply every day, Amen. daily life. Uh, I'm a Scorpio. Y'all want to get into zodiac signs, <laughs> astrology and all that. I got a lot of people that love trying to, oh, we got a lot of similarities. Oh, you're like this, you're like that. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. I don't get astrology. But uh, one thing I do know about Scorpio, we are very observant of people. And we enter a room, and a lot of times we're very quiet. People think we're funny acting, or we just don't talk. We're not funny acting, and anything we don't talk about, we can talk about. Mm. And we don't mind participating. But when I step into a room, I assess the entire room, wall to wall, ceiling to floor, right. person to person. Yeah, I can right. sit and tell you about yourself just by spending about a few, a few minutes just watching your interactions and what you do. When I, and I said, it's a gift from God yeah. because Amen. I, Amen. when I was in elementary school, I was born and raised in church, but you know we didn't really talk about gifts and all that at the church I was raised at uh, too much, you know. Um, and so I never understood it then, but I would go to school. I had a best friend. She was gothic, and uh, her name was Danielle. 
and she would pull up pictures and ask me they ask right there, or I would give her an age range, normally between five numbers, but it was in chronological order, meaning, oh, they're between 20 and 25, 19, 30, and 35. I never went out or like, oh, maybe 31 or 40. No, no, no. I gave a start and went straight up five numbers. It's like, you hit it. She would also ask me all type of advice, and I would tell her what to do or how to handle a situation or tell her what was going on or I would just look at her and start telling her what she, what she was dealing with. And she's like, how did you know that? I said, I don't know. I just, I just looked at you. I just, I'm just monitoring you. I recognize spirits from an early age. I recognize how to deal with them. I recognize how to approach them. I recognize how to, uh, how to not offend them because if you offend a spirit, it's hard. <laughs> Very it's hard mean. to pull in. It's kind of like one thing you've been your spend your entire life building your reputation a long time, and with all them years, you can have people that done grew with you all them years from day one, building this positive reputation. You make one mistake, and all them years, all the people you've always been there for, they don't know you anymore. Amen. One mess up. So when dealing, dealing with spirits, you've got to know how to handle them cautiously and with care. Uh, I'm going to leave y'all with this. Recognize the spirits that you come in contact with. Always assess your atmosphere. Uh, that's one. The second thing, once you assess it, you need to pinpoint the type of spirit that is in front of you and ask yourself, if I do this, how would they react based off what I know now? If I do that, how would they react based off what I know now? Or do I just leave it alone and just let it pan out whichever way it chooses to go? The third thing I want y'all to do when you're recognizing spirits, I want you to start really diving deeper than what the eyes see. The eyes see is one thing. But the spirit feels and sees a whole nother thing. Uh, your soul can say one thing, your heart can say one thing, and your body can say another. Amen. You need uh -huh. to recognize beyond your eye what is really going on and, and see not the individual that's in front of you, but see the spirit that is within. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. All right.